Good day doodlers, welcome to Draw Cartoons. If you want to learn how to draw the fast and easy way, this is the place to be. It's officially October again, the spookiest month of the year by far. Halloween is creeping up real close, so I figured it was a good time for Fulfill a request to make a video on how to draw the infamous Michael Myers. Yeah, baby. No, not Mike Myers, Michael Myers, who isn't quite as scary. <laughs> like this video and watch the whole thing to learn some great new tricks and impress your family and friends alike. As always, you'll need a pencil, paper, an eraser, and a sharpie to go over your sketch. Let's go! Let's get started. But first, if you want to learn to draw the fast and easy way, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Let's begin! Now, just like we usually do, we want to start with the head. So near the top of your page, uh, go ahead with your pencil. You want to draw a kind of a tall oval like this. I guess more like an egg shape, but it's uh, not so pointy at the top. Just kind of this, this very, very classic head shape going on here. And once you've drawn that, we'll cut it in half right down the middle. Create a nice line of symmetry so it's the same on both sides. And then carry on that line. And we're going to keep going and keep going until we get to about this kind of height here. And that height is uh, roughly, if we take this head into account, it's about two and a half heads in total, if you can kind of see that. Just as a guide for you to get your proportions right for this particular uh, cartoon drawing of Michael Myers. And as we reach the bottom, I'm just going to draw a very, very kind of sketchy line from left to right here, just to act as the floor for our character to be stood on. So with this in place, it helps us to identify the middle of this line. Uh, what I like to do here is, in the middle here, I like to draw a small notch there. And that is to show us where the torso is going to go and where the legs are going to go. And that notch is pretty much in the exact middle of this guideline here. So yeah, just, just draw a small little notch there and you'll have the line where the waist goes. So once you've drawn that, I'm going to draw a box sitting underneath this head. Just like this, doesn't have to be anything perfect at this stage, it's just a light sketch. Most drawings start off with just kind of building in those shapes first, and you can add all those lovely details on later. So uh, starting at this corner of this box, I'm going to come down, I'm going to start drawing the rough shape of one of the legs. So it's just a line that comes down diagonally, and then I'm going to cut across. You see how the bottom of this, um, of this part of the trousers just kind of cuts along that boot there in a diagonal angle towards the middle. And as I come towards the middle, I'm just going to bring it up to about here. Now normally I would draw the crotch about here, but I'm actually not going to do that for this particular drawing because Michael Myers is of course wearing overalls, and overalls can droop a little bit more than standard trousers, so to exaggerate that about a bit in this cartoon drawing, I'm going to bring it down to about this sort of height here. So once you've done that, we need to do this on the other side as well, so try and get this fairly symmetrically, or not, it's your drawing, and if you want to draw him looking a bit uneven, well it's certainly not out of character for this particular, well, character. So all I've done is I've just drawn this kind of diagonal sleeve, so to speak, this kind of this hem of the trousers, uh, just at this diagonal angle here, and then sticking out, I'm just going to draw the curve of the front of the boot here and the curve of the front of the boot here. And don't forget to draw a small line in for the heels of those shoes as well. Now, if, if at any point you feel I'm going too fast, don't worry, you can always rewind, pause the video to catch up. Uh, I'm just used to drawing quite quickly, so if I am do going too fast, uh, I do apologize, but uh, you can always slow this down and give it another go. So starting from the shoulder here, I'm just going to draw a line that kind of comes down diagonally, gets about level with this waist here when I finish, and then I'm going to draw a line across it just to tell me, right, that's where I want my wrist to go, and the hand is going to be here. Before we do that, we're going to draw the other arm, and as you can see from our original sketch here underneath, we're going to do something interesting with this arm. This is definitely going to challenge you. So starting again at this corner, see how we started at kind of each of the corners as we've gone along. It's a pretty good way to do things when you're drawing cartoons. I'm going to come away from the body at slightly more extreme angle. I'm going to come to about there, that's the elbow, and then the rest of the arm I'm going to draw up like this. I'm going to do the same thing. See how that doesn't go too much higher than the shoulder if I draw a line across for you? I'm going to do the same thing on this side, a line for the, uh, the wrist of our character here. And so what, what's going to go here is we're going to draw uh, his knife, just kind of uh, held down across his chest a little bit. So to help guide us later, it's probably useful to draw a diagonal line that goes down like that. See how that's not really attached to anything? If I just make this uh, original sketch a little less visible, just so it's clearer to you. 
So you can see this is going to be one end of the dagger and this is going to be the other end of the dagger. And all that line is doing is showing us, right, that's the direction I want the knife to be going in. So we'll come to that later, but for now I want to get started on drawing the very iconic mask of Michael Myers. So I think a good starting point for that is returning to the head. We want to cut this in half right across the middle again. So we end up with this very classic kind of a pizza shape that we usually go for, or kind of a stretched pizza really, where we have four slices, um, or it's more like a round window with this kind of cross uh, frame in the middle. Okay, so once we've drawn that shape there, we need to draw in the eyes. Now, this mask is very identifiable because of the shape of the eyes. And that might not be something that you uh, immediately think of when you think of Michael Myers. You know, you, if you draw the eyes like this, like big, big open circles, it's not going to look quite right. There's something about the shape of the eyes in this mask that makes him look more unsettling. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So starting this area here, just above this guideline here, I'm going to draw a line that goes straight across with an ever so slight curve to it. And then I'm going to bring it down diagonally, going through that little guideline there. Then I'm just going to follow the guideline back a bit before bringing up a diagonal line into the inner eye there. That's the shape you want to go for. So it's kind of slanted or tilted down this way, if you can kind of see that. It's not a particularly happy eye, it's not an angry eye, it's almost a sad eye. It looks kind of drooped, like the face has melted a bit. And that's why, that's part of why, <laughs> Michael Myers looks so unsettling. So obviously we have to do that on this side too. So as symmetrically as you can, using those guidelines to guide you, just do the same thing again if you need to do lots of small strokes with your pencil uh, to get that right, like I do, you go right ahead and do that. And you want to end up with these shapes like this, like eyes that are just kind of like melting off to the sides a little bit, just like that. And now with the eyes in place, I'm just going to draw a small crease like this on the inside of each of those eyes, just to kind of show the very, very top of the nose. And speaking of the nose, we can just kind of go ahead and draw that now. So we want to be cutting this right through that middle guideline there, and just kind of curve it down at the ends a little bit there. And it helps if we add a small couple of shapes here for the nostrils of the mask. And then either side of that nose, we need to draw uh, these kind of creases, these kind of wrinkles showing where the cheeks are. It's kind of weathered kind of shapes either side of the nose. And then in between those down this kind of area here, we're going to draw a closed mouth. And Michael Myers' mask isn't exactly smiling, it's just kind of a very flat, emotionless expression. If you want, in your drawing, you could draw a big, big, happy grin with sharp teeth or something like that if you really want to. Uh, but to draw it in the classic way, we're going to go for that kind of uh, closed mouth look there. Now for the shape of the mask, this is actually surprisingly intricate because it's just a latex mask. But uh, the way you draw it can be quite important in getting it right to how the character actually looks. So I think a good way to start is to quickly draw in some cheekbones. So we can do that by just curving out, or cur curving in rather, uh, from those outer parts of the mask. Uh, where the ears are going to sit and once you've drawn that we can actually draw those ears in because we know exactly where they're going to go now so it's just a small basic curve either side of the mask and we may as well finish off that jaw because the jaw of the mask is actually deceptively tricky so coming down from here we're going to just kind of follow the guideline that we drew but as we get to the bottom we're going to round it out with a with a chin like that okay try and get that shape as best you can and then just follow the guideline up giving it a slight See how sl slightly bent it here? Very, very, very subtle thing, um, but that can be quite powerful in the final drawing. And just to make it a little bit more spooky, um, we can add a few more wrinkles to this mask to show that it's been worn very, very often. So maybe some wrinkles here underneath the, uh, underneath the very eyes themselves. Maybe some here just to kind of make this look a bit more uh, gaunt, a bit more kind of weathered. Maybe a wrinkle here over the chin. Okay, see immediately the effect it has by just adding a few lines. That mask really looks kind of worn down and well, a little bit more creepy. And let's add a few uh, creases to the forehead as well, because why not? Now while we're up here, we can finish off the mask. If we follow from this ear here, if we follow this up, this guideline up, and then before we reach the top, we just kind of cut it off and just follow along the forehead like this, then bring it down along this guideline here, we've actually finished off the mask already. So now we can jump into drawing the hair. The hair is really, really fun, but it's very, very messy. So you can kind of, uh, 
you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Uh, Michael Myers has medium length hair. It's not quite short, but it's not quite long either. Um, and it's very, very bedraggled and messy because I guess he doesn't get an awful lot of chance to wash it. So uh, what you can do, uh, I've actually done a tutorial on how to draw hair. I'll link that there uh, for now for you to click whenever you like, watch that whenever you like. Uh, but a quick crash course in how to draw messy hair. Following the shape of the head like this, we're going to just kind of draw wavy spikes coming away from the head like this. Make it really messy, very, very unkempt. Give it lots of curves. Just really kind of let your pencil go wild here. And if you draw hair that looks out of place, well, don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's Michael Myers, and I don't think he really has access to a comb. Or, well, he probably has access to it, but he can't really be bothered to use it, because if you're a villain in a horror movie, you know, you're, not, you're probably not too interested in looking good. So I'm just adding some more kind of length to the hair down here, either side of the head. To be honest, my hair is probably a little bit too, uh, too neat here, but I'm going to leave it the way it is, because I kind of like the way it looks anyway. So once you've drawn the hair, you might want to spend some time on doing that, actually, making sure you've got those messy bits right. Maybe draw a few more flicky bits out here, make it look a bit, bit more unneat. So once the head is done, we can move on to the rest of the body. So right underneath the head, we want to draw a big open collar. And to do that, we're going to draw a diagonal line that comes out from under the jaw there. And then this one curves right across the chest. And it doesn't stop until you go past this line of symmetry. And once we get to that point, it comes straight down because he's wearing overalls. So this kind of goes all the way down to here where the crotch starts. Okay, and now we need to draw the other um, part of his collar just kind of sticking out here. So again, the same kind of deal, but this time as we come across, it tucks in at that line of symmetry. And then we get this kind of immediate impression that it's, uh, it's all zipped up. This, this bit here is all zipped up and closed. So drawing that collar, tucking into that one, straight away gives us this, this really, really cool effect that it's folded in there. So don't forget a little neck, we're just going to draw a couple of lines in here. Uh, that's probably going to be the same colour as the mask, because the mask does actually have a neck portion, so that's all going to be white. Okay, and now moving on to his, uh, his costume, I think it's actually, in this particular instance, it's better to start with the hands, funnily enough, than to go in and draw the costume, because the hands are holding this big knife, and it's better to draw this knife before we draw anything that has to go underneath it. So I'm actually going to start with this hand. This, this is going to be quite tough, so I hope you're ready. This is all a big warm-up, but if you've got this far, you'll definitely want to finish. So starting with this line here that we drew for the wrist, I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to draw a line that goes straight up like this, and it just kind of touches where I drew the guideline for the end of the knife. And once you've drawn that, we're going to draw three fingers, because it's a cartoon and we like to draw three fingers in cartoons. It's not a, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's um, generally something I feel looks good. And we're just going to draw these L shapes like this, and then stop there. Once you get there, we're going to just kind of close it off, and as we get to that guideline, I'm going to kind of suddenly break down and then go down to that wrist line there. So try and get that shape as best you can. All we did was we went up and we drew these three kind of L shapes, a little bit disconnected from each other, just a little bit, and then bringing back down for the palm there. Once you've drawn that hand, we can draw the knife that it's holding. So let's start with the easier part. Uh, we're going to draw the very, very end of the handle here, and it's just a simple, I guess, box, or maybe you can give it slightly rounded edges if you want. It's, it's your knife drawing, you can draw it however you like. And now for the blade, I think it's actually easier to draw the blade than the very, very end of the handle that would go here. So to do that, I'm going to draw a line here. And then the, the back of the blade is as straight as you can, going right to the very, very tip of this guideline here. And then the front of the blade has a bit more of a curve to it, but it meets up at that very, very end there, making it look very, very sharp. And then we can just kind of draw in the rest of the handle there, sitting snugly right under the very, very end or the, the flatter end of the, uh, the blade, the thicker end, rather. So once you've got that blade in place, uh, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and draw this arm now, because there's only a stick holding his hand up, and well, I don't know if he's going to be able to swing his weapon around with, with an arm that skinny. So let's start at the sleeve. It's a bit of an unusual approach, but what I like to do here, if you draw a line just along the bottom of the hand there, and then just stop, that's all you have to do for that. And then if you start again here, and then bring it down. If I just go past the elbow here and go back to this, you can see all that, that line there, that little line all by itself, 
has really given us a great impression of this hand coming out of a sleeve. It's almost like 3D. So this is the back of the sleeve going around the hand, and this is the front of the sleeve just kind of snugly letting it sit in there. So returning to the elbow, I'm just going to round this off, bring it back toward the torso, and stop about there. Now what about the inner part of the arm? Well, we've got this blade covering a little bit, so I'm just going to kind of draw underneath it. So I'm going to come down here only a little bit, I'm not going to go as far as the guideline. Once I do get there, I'm going to stop, come back a bit, and draw another line that just does that. Now what's that doing? Well, it's just a crease in the arm. It's, it's helping to exaggerate how much the arm has folded in holding the knife up the way he's holding it. So then this upper arm here just kind of sits underneath where that blade's going, and then we can't really see his shoulder because the blade is in the way. Now, let's move on to the other arm. <laughs> this one is a lot less complicated, so you can stop holding your breath. So we'll start at this wrist here, this, this line for the wrist. I'm gonna start at this end, and I'm gonna draw a line that comes down and just forms a soft curve like that for a thumb. And now we need to draw his index finger, so we'll bring this back down and drape it fairly low, a bit lower than the thumb, before bringing it back up. I'm gonna draw a small bump for the knuckle, and then bring it back into the wrist guideline here. Now, that's not too convincing a hand shape at the moment, but once we do this, I'm gonna add a small bump for a finger here, and another bump just behind that, and straight away, oh, okay, that's kinda of made the difference there. We can see this is a 3D hand going on. So, quick tip for you, just a couple of fingers behind the front finger like that can really give the impression that, oh yeah, that's definitely a hand and not just some weird shape. <laughs> So we can start back from the shoulder again, and we can just bring this down, following the shape of our guideline, the angle of our guideline rather. Along the way, you can add some bumps for wrinkles. And I think it would be good to have this resting a bit over the hand like that. See how I've just gone right over that wrist? Okay, and then work your way back up. Maybe add a few more bumps for wrinkles in the clothing again, and then stop as we approach the torso. Now you'll be pleased to know we're pretty much at the end, we've got all the hard stuff out of the way, so just to do the rest of this we need to make those overalls look really really convincing. So I'm going to start at this armpit here, and I'm just going to draw a line just outside of the guideline here, and that gives me room to just draw some creases in the clothing, and all I'm doing to do that is just going outside of the guideline and then swinging back in. Outside of the guideline and then swinging back in a bit. Okay, and you should definitely mix that up, otherwise it's just going to kind of look like crumpled jelly. Um, so maybe sometimes flick it back out like that, very subtle little thing there, but it's a very classic kind of way of drawing a crease in some clothing. I will do a tutorial on how to draw crease clothing uh, quite soon, because it is something that's been requested and it's quite tricky. And when I get to the, the shoe here, I'm actually going to bring this a bit lower than I did with my guideline, just because I think it will look better this way. The overalls are very, very baggy, so I want to reflect that in my drawing. So again, I'm just going to bring this up, making the line a bit wobbly as I get to the crotch, and then just kind of doing more of the same, kind of having some fun with it, bringing it low over that boot there, and then I get to go back up this way, add a few more creases, swing them out a bit, swing them in, just make them wobbly, and we can see the effect that has, just giving it those little wobbles. Um, don't go too crazy with them. If you do this, it's going to look a little bit silly, but it is your drawing after all. If you want to draw a, a jelly Michael Myers, then you, you go for it. So, uh, But I, I recommend you keep the subtle creases, well, subtle. So we're just going to bring this up. Uh, very, very small bumps here now, bringing it up to this armpit. And there we go. So we just need a pocket on this side. That's just a very, very wide V shape on this side and then a line underneath it like this, just imitating the shape of a pocket, maybe a crease here to show where the flap closes. And uh, well, the boots are pretty much done from the very, very start, but there is something we can add. Let me just solidify these lines here so they're a bit more clear. We can draw in the soles of these boots, and that's just a very, very simple straight line from front to back along the very, very bottom. So I would go as far as to say our drawing of Michael Myers here is done, or at least the sketches. So get your Sharpie out and go over all the lines you want to keep. Forget about these guidelines, you don't need these anymore. Those were just there to help us uh, build the shape of our character, but now that they've served their purpose, you can get rid of them. So I'm just getting rid of a few uh, to show you. That's a guideline, that's a guideline. Obviously this big kind of cross shape on the face, that's all just guidelines. But yeah, get your Sharpie, go over the lines you want to keep, and you'll end up with your very own awesome inked drawing of Michael Myers. Once you're done, try colouring it in. Halloween is even spookier when you draw it yourself. 
While you're here, why not join the Draw Cartoons Discord? You can share your drawings, thoughts, and, well, pretty much anything else whenever you want, and everyone is welcome. Just scroll down, hit the Discord link, and that's it. Welcome to the Discord Doodlers. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you drop me a like and subscribe if you want to keep learning to draw the fast and easy way. Until next time.